Hey everyone, it's Ariko. This is going to be a fundamental guide to choke in Smash Ultimate, which I think should be useful for you, whether you're a returning veteran of the character, wondering what has changed and how to adapt your play style, or if you're completely new to him. I've actually been wanting to release a full guide on the character for a while, so here we are. So Shulk in Smash Ultimate is a character who excels at several things. In general, he has two unique main niches. The first is that he is one of the only stance characters in the Smash Bros. series, and Shulk, using his five and auto arts, is able to go into, at any time, five different useful modes, which each have different uses based on what situation he is in. He has a mode for jumping high, moving fast, tanking hits, dealing damage and doing combos, and for taking stocks. Going into or between these arts only takes about a quarter of a second. Getting a general idea of these Minato arts is pretty important, so I will be of course going more into what they do and how best to use them. The other main niche Shulk has is uh, he has a big sword. He has a lot of disjoint. He has the largest melee disjoints in the game besides Simon and Richter. Not bad. If you don't know what disjoint is, it just simply means that if the opponent attacks Shulk's sword, the Minato, while you are using it in an attack yourself, you would not be damaged because of it, unlike if you were attacking them with, say, a leg or something. So if you play it right, this allows you to attack the opponent while they themselves can't do anything to you. This is very useful in general. It also opens up tons of doors for Shulk off the stage, punishing opponents' attempts at getting back to the ledge. He has many other useful elements to him as well, so there's a lot I will be going over in this guide. Let us begin! So, Monado Arts. The most unique thing about Shulk is his Monado Arts. Each Monado Art has its own unique functions and changes how Shulk is played. Knowing how the Monado Arts change Shulk's gameplay is important to playing Shulk successfully. I believe in you, Shulk. His five arts, and they are always in this order. Jump, Speed, Shield, Buster, Smash. And you're going to need to know that order. For the most part, the names loosely describe what they do. Monado Jump is king of the air. Monado Speed has vastly increased movement speeds. Monado Shield goes virtually nowhere, either when hit or just trying to actually move around, kind of like he's wearing a full set of armor. Monado, protect us! Monado Buster has busted damage output. And finally, Smash aims to get the final blow, smashing you hard into the blast zone with immense knockback added to his moves. Get them, Shulk! Smash pow! Shulk without any Monado words is typically referred to as vanilla. Ricky getting hungry! But he may also be just called artless, depending on who you are talking to. Shulk has two ways to get into these Monado words. You can either go the generally slower way, which is by doing quick presses of the B button until you get to the art you want, which we call cycling, or you can go the fast way, which is holding B for a short amount of time and then moving the left joystick in the direction of each art you want, and then of course just letting go of B when you are over that art. Generally speaking, I would recommend to use the dialing method to get into arts because it's so much faster, but there are still some situations where you might want to do cycling instead. Either way, once your art activates, you will be given 13 frames of intangibility to help you to be able to make the switch without being punished for it. To get to the art dial itself, you need to hold B for 11 frames, or about 1 sixth of a second. You will normally not be able to do any actions while the dial is up. In contrast, with the cycling method, you are free to keep moving or to perform any action as you get to that art, which could be seen as a slight benefit for it. However, since the dial method is so quick, the consequences of that short time you can't use an art are rather minute. However, something that using cycling can do that the art dial can't is deactivating an art without having to go into another art. You do this by simply, when you are in a Monado art, you press B three times. And this is the only way you can actually deactivate an art without going into another one. Now, if you are stuck in a moves animation, you can also just press B three times near the end of that animation to have the art deactivation buffered once the move is over. This can be useful to know when you're in tight situations where you just need to get out of that art as soon as you can, and this can sometimes be needed because each art has its own downsides. Now, the positives of each art tend to outweigh the negatives, but if you're, say, trying to recover while in the Outer Shield, you're not going to be having a good time. Ricky, not like that future! Now, compared to Smash 4, all arts have more drastic buffs and debuffs, and they all have a much shorter duration and longer cooldown, which actually varies from art to art. This element of them being a lot stronger but lasting a lot shorter makes them very similar to Smash 4's Hyper Monado arts, which were notorious for being very good, actually. Oh, yeah, baby! And yeah, with all that said, let's get into what each Monado art does.
So our first one is Monado Jump. The most obvious thing about Monado Jump is you jump really high, especially your full hop. How's that? It just goes crazy high. And your up B, Air Slash, also goes pretty high, at least 50% higher than usual. Uh, not only this, you also travel very fast in the air. You travel so fast, in fact, that you drift faster than you run, and you have the fastest airspeed in the game. Rip through the air! Your fall speed also gets a significant increase, but it's not as much as the increase in the drift speed, which actually, if you look at it, decreases the angle at which you fall, which is actually good for recovery. So yeah, the most obvious and useful use of Monado Jump is for recovery. Now, Shulk's recovery isn't that bad, so you may not feel like you need it all the time, but personally I would say it's better to be safe than sorry. Switching into Monado Jump gives you a lot more options for dealing with opponent edge guards and makes your recovery less choreographed and predictable. With Monado Jump, you may not need to use your double jump, or you might be able to recover with only using your double jump. You can mix up the angle at which you approach the ledge more, and also the height relative to the edge better. The future is ours to decide! Depending on how far you got launched, you might even be able to completely avoid any edge guarding attempts of theirs at all by simply going to the other ledge by traveling underneath the stage, which in the Smash community is called Scrooging. I'll survive no matter what! And this is especially good on smaller stages like Smashville and Town City. When switching into Monado Jump for recovery, there are a few quirks you need to be aware of. The first is that the Monado Art stances can be changed while you are in hit stun. Hit stun being the time that you take a hit that you can't do anything. This is something that you need to know for Shulk for far more than just switching into recovery. For instance, later we'll talk about this with Monado Shield. But there is a very specific quirk you need to be aware of with this. Do you remember how I said that you normally can't do any moves or actions while you are in the art dial menu? This is the main exception to that. If you open the art dial while you are in hit stun, you can act in any way you want while you have it open. So from drifting to jumping to air dodging. And what I need to note is DIing. You need to be aware of this because what this means is if you need to be DIing right and you're DIing left because you're trying to go into jump, you're going to die. Oh no! So to get around this, you can either intentionally DI in the direction you want to go, despite the art dial being up. So you might be hovering buster, but simply hold the joystick left after you're done DIing to go into jump. Or you can wait until you're done with DIing to open up the art dial. Or you can just use a cycling method, which is one press of the B button if you're not already in a Monado art, and four presses of the B button otherwise, with three to deactivate it and one to go into jump. The other quirk is that if you do end up going into the pose animation when you're selecting your Monado art, this pose actually prevents you from drifting. And with the aid of Monado Jump's increased fall speed, you will sink like a rock. I can't. Go on. If this ever happens, you can get rid of it by doing any air move. Or, if you don't want to commit to anything, you can also just get rid of it by simply pressing neutral B once. For some reason it works, it just gets rid of your animation. I... I can still do it! Just be careful you don't accidentally input side B, because again, you'll die. Not good. Now, with using jump, you don't want to get too greedy with it, because it only lasts 6 seconds, and once it's used up, you have to wait a whole 18 seconds until you can use it again. So with the 6 seconds, if you're not careful, it may even run out before you get the chance to make it back to stage if you're trying to do some edge guards or something with it. And if you're not careful about the 18 second cooldown, it might be gone in a time that you need it. Don't get careless, guys! So, Monado Jump's usage in the neutral is debatable. You could view it as something that should only be saved for recovery, but it depends on how much you actually end up needing it for that purpose. Personally, I find I only use it a few times per game, so there's a lot of time where I could use Monado Jump outside of recovery without feeling the effects. Though, it could be argued that maybe I'm not using it enough for recovery, you know, maybe I should be switching to it more often when I'm opting not to. Um, it's really hard to say, and I think this itself is going to come up to personal preference. Still, if you decide to use Jump in situations other than recovery, here's what you need to know about it. Its main drawback is it takes 30% more damage when you are hit by moves. That's a lot. And so yeah, if you end up in the wrong situation while using Monado Jump, you can end up taking a lot of damage. However, this can only happen if they somehow manage to catch you. With your jumps and airspeed so high, it's very hard to catch you. Not on special move, swoosh dodge! Furthermore, when you land with aerials at full speed, you slide really far after you hit them, so they have a hard time punishing you. And if you do hit them, Monado Jump has several combos as well. You copy swoosh dodge technique! If they are in the air, 
My outer jump can also be used for an attempt at surprising them and snagging an early kill with up air or air slash. Now, if you are worried about this extra damage you take having a big difference on your death percents, don't worry about it! Generally speaking, the difference in your death percent will be the difference in the damage they deal. So if they deal 4% more damage to you with the same move, they will be able to kill you at 4% earlier than they would have been able to if you were in vanilla. In the long run, this doesn't really matter much. It's also noteworthy to say that the increase in fall speed and gravity also makes a very slight difference on the death percents from vertical moves. And in fact, it can make it so that you actually die later from vertical moves. But yeah, regardless, a few percents is not something you should really be caring much about. Generally though, I have been experimenting with using Minato Jump to wait out respawn invincibility, and I also try to use it to get out of disadvantage positions. This includes jumping in on zoning characters, and while I'm doing so, perhaps switching into another Monado art to keep my advantage on them. Looks like we're setting the pace! Moving on to Monado speed. You're fast now in terms of movement speed. Pretty much the fastest character in the game in all respects except for frame data. Ha! You have the highest air speed, again, but it's not as high as Minato Jump, so you could say it's the second highest air speed. You have the highest walk speed, which isn't the most important thing, but it's completely hilarious because you actually walk faster than Vanilla Shulk runs. And as for dashing and running, you're comparable to Sonic. How do you like that? So Sonic has a higher maximum run speed, but his initial dash is much lower, and it takes him a while to get up to that max speed. Speed Shulk, on the other hand, pretty much starts at his max speed with a large burst of sudden speed. Super fast dash! So Shulk has a much faster Foxtrot, and if just running, it takes about the same amount of time for Shulk and Sonic to cross a standard competitive legal stage. For Battlefield, for instance, 53 frames. For Shulk, 52 frames for Sonic pretty much the same. For any shorter distance, such as half of the stage, Shulk will get there faster. <laughs> we win! You seem exhilarated, Shulk. As for other effects, Shulk has an increased ground traction or friction, meaning decreased blowback from attacks on shield, and faster stopping in general. Minato Speed also has a vastly lower jump height, which can be good or bad depending on the circumstance. Your gravity is also somewhat increased, which is only really notable or noticeable with Air Slash, which has a slightly lower height because of this. This lower jump height though means that grounded opponents are never out of range, like vertically, for your moves. So you can actually just buffer them from your short hop or full hop rather than needing to wait until you rise and then fall back down to do so. And the fact that you jump shorter actually means that you land faster, which is good for chaining aerials with combos or sweeping opponents off the stage or just throwing out more moves faster. All right. Time for a chain attack! One of the downsides to your jump height is if you're being cornered at the ledge, jumping over the opponent isn't as easy of an option. And the double jump is pretty pitiful if you're trying to recover with it. You also can't full hop onto most platforms, so you will need to use up your double jump if you're wanting to, or just don't even try. Uh, some people actually feel like this is a good thing for Shulk because it helps to prevent platforms from getting in your way as you're trying to chase down your opponent. And with offstage, I wouldn't say that speed is the worst at recovery, because while the double jump is pitiful, it just has like a huge drift speed and a very, very low recovery angle. And this can kind of counter the downside of not having a double jump. If Minato jump is gone, then actually switching to Minato speed is a good idea in most cases. The final and most objectively bad balancing measure for Minato speed is it makes all of your moves do 30% less damage. Ugh. Despite this, Minato Speed Shulk actually does the same exact knockback as Vanilla Shulk. Regardless, this cut to damage still takes away from Minato Speed's safety on shield and damage output. Though, when it comes to the damage output, Speed makes up for this with its high movement speed, making for more strings and combos, and pushing your advantage harder against the opponent in general. Let's press on and on and on! And when it comes to safety and shield, you have to keep in mind that you need to be spacing more when you are in speed because of this. And taking advantage of that high air speed to do the same thing we talked about with jump, to get that nice slide as you land. 
And of course, if the opponent is shielding, your grab game is also really improved by being a Monado Speed, so make sure to utilize that. In general though, Monado Speed is a great tool to use in neutral and advantage states of the game. Monado Speed gives you huge advantages over your opponents with avoiding attacks, spacing yourself, playing rush down, pushing opponent attacks, juggling, and pressing your advantage with strings and combos that are opened up by the movement speed. Monado Speed lasts 2 seconds longer than Monado Jump at 8 seconds, and it's 2 seconds less of cooldown at 16 seconds. On the other hand, the increase to your gravity could influence how comboable you are, but also your drift speed should really help against being juggled. And one last thing to note about Manel Speed is it is actually pretty good for edge guarding opponents. If you've hit an opponent off stage, the high speed that Manado Speed has allows you to get off the stage near them much quicker to try to seal the deal with an edge guarding move. The increase in gravity also helps with this a small bit. Just be wary not to go too deep because again, you barely have a double jump and your air slash goes slightly lower. No good can come from haste. Monado, shield us! All right, Monado shield. Shield is a very important art for Shulk, being mostly a tool to help reduce disadvantaged states. Its role has changed drastically from Smash 4 due to several huge changes. One key change with Monado shield is its duration and cooldown are the same as Monado jumps. At six seconds for duration, and 18 seconds for cooldown. Additionally, shield has a special additional factor where it actually decreases in duration by 5% with each hitbox that comes in contact with Shulk while he's in it. Yes, this includes grab pummels, and this is something for both sides to keep in mind during a game. This means shield inherently cannot be used as a stalling tool anymore because it just can't be used long enough or frequently enough to fit that purpose. So I'm sorry, no more living past 200% because you're abusing Monado Shield. What? Ugh. Another big nerf to Monado Shield is that in Smash 4, your knockback was barely affected. And one big change to Monado Shield in Smash Ultimate is that it significantly decreases knockback now. It actually has a multiplier for it. So if you're using Shield when both you and your opponent are high percents, you're also going to have a decreased ability to kill them. This ain't looking peachy. Of course, the decrease in knockback and the moves you throw at opponents is still much less than the decrease they have against you, but I wouldn't really recommend using shield to try to get kills. Gotta focus on guarding! The other main drawbacks to Monado Shield are that it makes you pretty much the least mobile character in the game, with its crazy low movement speeds and much lower jump heights. Oh man, after all my training. Regardless to all this, the main draw to Monado Shield, and what makes it so good, Yo! is the great new ability at getting you out of disadvantaged states. Okay, now we're getting started. Monado Shield has a very buffed knockback resistance from Smash 4. You will not die. Now it's right time! And in Smash 4, Monado Shield could sometimes be used to get you out of combos. In Smash Ultimate, Monado Shield can do not just that, but also make your opponent's moves unsafe on hit. Yeah! Rhyme time! You're really getting into this rhyme! Which honestly can be just kind of stupid. But yes, since you can switch to Monado Shield while in hit stun, and multi-hit moves don't affect this, you can get out of virtually any combo for free. <laughs> in your face! Here's how it's done! Simply hold B for about a sixth of a second, Press down on the joystick, let go of B, and you're free. All right, good job. Note that you need to have the joystick in the neutral position when you start to do this. Otherwise, you'll probably be trying to input something like a vision or a backslash. Let's not lose our heads though. But yeah, Shulk is immune to being zero to death. <laughs> Don't mess with the best, keep your stinking future. But yeah, this is something that you need to be proactive about and you need to actually know that you're going to get comboed to break out of the combo. So it comes better paired with good matchup knowledge in general. And I think as the game goes on and on, this is just going to be an even more and more powerful tool for Shulk. That's right, ain't no stopping us. Easy there, Ryan. And it's not just combos though, Monado Shield can be used for all kinds of disadvantaged situations. It helps you to land in the face of opponents who want to juggle you or to keep you pressured on platforms. If they hit you, 
it will only do half the damage and he won't go really anywhere because of it meaning you're closer to the ground Whoa! i'm back baby and again depending on what percent you're at their move might even be unsafe against you and if that happens make sure to hit them and switch out a shield as soon as you can going into another art which can help depress your advantage a lot better because shield's really not good at that shulk you're up nothing's gonna stop me this is actually another general strategy you can use Minato Shield for. Use it until you get a hit on the opponent, which puts you in the advantage state, and then switch into a different art to work from there. We've got a good rhythm going! Since you take half damage, the consequences of having been hit in that disadvantage state was greatly reduced, and Minato Shield itself, with his low knockback taken, might be able to get you out of that advantage quickly too. I'm riding the waves, man! One final buff Minato Shield has is that your shield itself takes like no damage. We don't know the exact numbers on it yet, but it seems to be twice as strong as typical shields. <laughs> Nothing's gonna touch you as long as I'm around. Because of this, one strategy could be just to stay in shield until your opponent does something that you can punish, and if they grab you, many throws are unsafe on hit now. Now, you will need to keep in mind the matchup when you are using an outer shield. For example, in matchups where the opponent's flooding you with projectiles, snake, shield will be used quite differently. You may use it to get out of juggle situations and combos, but it won't be as useful trying to win back an advantage state when they can just go find a spot to camp you out with projectiles. Ugh, can't get them from here! In general though, shield is very strong and a fun tool to have in your arsenal. Just goes to show, brawn is better than brains. Well, wait, Monado the head! Shoot him in the Buster. head! Buster is mostly an advantage or neutral state art. Like in Smash 4, Buster multiplies the damage on your moves by 40% more. However, the damage extra it takes is now a whopping 30% over 13%, making it a tool you only want to go ham with when you are in advantage state. Let us change tactics. The main way they have buffed it into Ultimate though is that the developers have somehow worked it out so that Buster can combo at pretty much any percent. There's no escape! It does much less knockback now than it used to, which is probably actually more of a good thing, because it keeps the opponent from getting away from you so that you can continue to tack on more and more damage against them. Looks rather painful. The other big buff to Minato Buster is the same indirect buff all other arts have, being able to switch into it on a dime. This is great because if you manage to get the opponent into any disadvantaged state, whether that is off stage, above you, or on a platform, or whatever, you can quickly switch into Minato Buster to start throwing out your meaty moves at them. Minato Buster is great for having huge damage per second, and if you bring it out in a good situation, you should be getting tons of damage percent on your opponent. This is going to be so great when we finish it. Minato Buster lasts 10 seconds, the longest of all arts, so you have 10 seconds to do as much damage as you can. Its cooldown is also the most generous, at 14 seconds. Buster is also a good tool to use against opponents who like to shield, because its increased damage makes for a lot of shield damage. And this shield damage also makes your move safer on shield, because of increased shield stun and blowback they are given. Minato Buster has the greatest amount of safety on shield of all the arts, and opponents in general should not be punishing most of your moves on shield, unless you are being really bad with spacing. Just don't lose your focus! But yeah! Buster is a very solid tool to keep in mind for those advantageous positions you find yourself in. If you get yourself in an advantage state, and the opponent is not at the percent damage yet where you think you would be likely to get a kill, I really would recommend switching into Buster to get that huge damage out on them. If you are in a disadvantage state, you really should be considering switching out a Buster as soon as you can, because it's almost like they have Buster too, because they have 1.3 times damage, whereas you have 1.4 times, it's not that big of a difference. And the faster you switch out a buster, the quicker it starts to go into cooldown, so that you have it readily available again when you get the advantage back. We mustn't be careless! And yes, aside from damage, buster is very good at getting combos, and we're going into that more in depth after we cover the last Minato art, Minato Smash. Do you remember everything we talked about for switching into Buster when you get the advantage state? That all applies to Minato Smash. 
Monado's Smash is essentially Inverse Buster, where Buster deals more damage as a consequence of taking more damage, Smash deals more knockback as a consequence of taking more knockback. That's right. Buster greatly reduces the knockback you deal, and Smash greatly reduces the damage you deal. While the lack of knockback can be a good thing for Buster, lack of damage in Monado Smash is a downside no matter how you look at it. Except maybe if you're hitting your opponent in doubles. <laughs> Even Ricky know that not right. Whereas Buster gets a small boost in neutral from the extra damage dealt to shields, Smash doesn't have that. Really, Monado Smash's only use comes from trying to make the final blows to your opponent and getting the final kill. Consign the enemy to oblivion! Yeah, Melia! Let's smash him to bits! That is all it is really good at, and is its main and only purpose. It applies a multiplier to all of your knockback values in general, except for moves that are purely weight-dependent set knockback. Due to this, Monado Smash excels in the advantage state of the game. It's great when the opponent is in any sort of disadvantage state, where they are at least at somewhat high of a percent. Monado Smash can help you get kills very early with edge guards, and in general has a huge effect on all your moves to make them kill much earlier. The difference in kill percents is huge. <laughs> this is the end for you. Monado Smash should be avoided when there is good possibility of the opponent killing you. I would advise pulling back. If you are off stage, above the opponent, trapped near the ledge, at any sort of highest percent, you should consider switching out of Monado Smash as soon as you can. We need to keep our guard up! And now the exception to that is if the opponent is at high percent and you are at low percent. Because if they are trying to combo you, Monado Smash can be put on to try to throw off their combos because the increased knockback you take can make the difference on whether a move will hit you or won't. I'll smash that future away! Furthermore, even something like your neutral layer may be enough to get them out of your face and put you back into the advantage, which you will again want to be in because you want to get the kill. Just cautious that you don't get edge carded. Monado Smash lasts for an average duration of 8 seconds with 16 seconds of cooldown, just like Monado Speed. Yeah, that will sort it nicely. In conclusion, as you get the hang of the art dial, Shulk becomes more and more of a fun, exciting, and interesting character. Ricky having lots of fun! There is limitless creativity you can have in applying your different Monado arts at different times. This guide serves to give you the general idea of how to use the arts, but there is plenty still to explore and to apply. Time to show them what Homs can really do. Now, the, the moves. moves.